Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at Chiron in the seventh house. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the wound itself followed by practical tips and advice on how to heal, okay? However, before we do get started, if you would like to know more information all about your Chiron sign as well as your Chiron house, as well as your Virgo house within your natal birth chart and your sixth house within the birth chart as well, respectfully, then I have created a Virgo season slash archetype ebook. So what I am gonna do is I am gonna provide a link to that ebook in the description box so that you can pick up your copy today. All right then, so with all those introductions out of the way, Chiron in the seventh house. Let's do this. So what I am coming to notice is that if you have Chiron in the seventh house, your wound may specifically be directed towards your relationships, more so your one-on-one -on -one relationships. Yes, the seventh house is known as the house of the other, so looking at other people besides you overall, but this wound may actually be connected with a close person, so that one-on-one -on -one interaction that you had with someone whenever you were younger. So. With that in mind, an example could be perhaps your best friend. Maybe you had a really close friend whenever you were younger and they rejected you. Maybe they were really mean and hurtful and critical towards you. Or they could have used your own wounds, your own hurts and pains against you. Because the thing about the seventh house is that whilst yes, the seventh house can be seen as that part of us that we're attracted to, the types of people and partners we're attracted to, but also it can show the qualities and uh, just the different qualities in other people that we, well attributes is the other word that I'm really looking for there, the qualities and the attributes that we may not really like in other people at the same time. So yes, we may be attracted to certain qualities in others, but we also may look at certain qualities in others and see them as things that we dislike, looking at competitors, for example, looking at our enemies, for example, they can also be located within the seventh house. So the way I kind of view the seventh house in a way is it can either be a friend or a foe, a lover or an ex, okay? It can be either or. So with that being said, if you have Karen in the seventh house in association with the friend, maybe this friend betrayed you stabbed you in the back, really just hurt you, and so they turned into your enemy. They turned into a foe. Also then looking at partnerships. So the type of union that you form with another person, more specifically looking at a committed relationship with another person. So if you have Karen on the seventh house, maybe you find this relationship, the, the commitment, the relatability, the trying to share in a union with someone else, maybe that's just really hurtful. Maybe that's just something that you've struggled with a lot of your life, for a lot of your life. Or perhaps you have this thing about you where you're like, I wanna be in a relationship and I wanna be connected with somebody, but at the same time, I don't. And maybe you have this very indecisive, like him and in hand about, should you, shouldn't you? And even whenever you do go into that committed relationship, it's almost like you still have one foot at the door, right? So it may just be really difficult for you to properly commit to somebody, or this could be a matter of you want to commit to somebody, but nobody seems to just meet you halfway. Nobody, nobody seems to have relatable qualities and attributes within them that you're like, yes, I'm gonna get on really, really well with you. It can just be a very back and forth energy here. Maybe you have actually been with somebody before in the past, specifically looking at your younger years and you were just trying to get to know yourself, but you jumped into a relationship really early. You know, you could have been that person in high school who would just jump from relationship to relationship without an awareness of yourself. 
and so from that jumping from person to person maybe that just caused inner turmoil within you or maybe it hurt other people or maybe they hurt you and so it's kind of led on to this thought that maybe you'll never be able to find a person who you just get on really really well with you know or maybe you just don't believe in marriage or maybe you don't believe in a proper connection or monogamy in any way with another person because of these experiences that you have been through. However, with that being said, if we were to actually look at the types of relationships that you saw whenever you were younger, so looking at the bond, the union between your parents, for example, maybe that was a bit difficult. Maybe, for example, your parents divorced whenever you were younger, or maybe they fought a lot, or perhaps they just never really saw eye to eye, or you could sort of see how they were interacting with one another and you just saw through their BS, you just saw through their passive aggressive nature that you kind of, you know, you analyze this and you sort of thought to yourself, well, why are you even together? What, why are you even married? Why are you in a relationship when all you do is say one thing, do another, all you do is just compromise for the sake of compromise without actually doing anything about it, you know? It could have just all been talk and no action in that regard between your parents. So, like I say, this relationship with your parents, you could have just seen as just dull, as just hurtful, as just something that you refuse to ever want for yourself. Therefore, with this perception of relationships from such a young age between your parents, then that could have led to your own perception being morphed and molded into, I'm never going to find anybody who's going to appreciate me. Um, is it that I'm going to enter into a different, or is it that I'm going to be with someone who acts like they want to be with me, but they really don't want to be with me. Your parents might have been in an ugly divorce as well, which you might have experienced whenever you were really, really young, or maybe there was just a tragic breakup that just hurt you deeply. If anything, relationships just seem to come with baggage. They seem to be emotionally draining. You may look at them as just really hard, However, on the other side of this, you might actually be this type of person who finds it really difficult to be alone. So kind of going back to the jumping from person to person, whilst there can be this side of this placement that refuses love in a way, or doesn't want to be with anybody, or is afraid to be with people, or doesn't want to deal with other people, there's the other side of it where you find it really hard just to be on your own because you're almost depending on other people to validate how you're feeling because maybe your own emotional needs or your needs overall from other people in your life was not filled in some way. It wasn't given to you. So there's this part of you that maybe feels fragmented. There's this part of you that feels broken. And so you maybe unconsciously searching for somebody else to fill that void but nobody ever does fill that void because you yourself might not even might not even know what that is but then this could also further result in you then attracting other people who are also quote unquote fragmented and broken and maybe they are wounded themselves maybe they come from either a similar background or maybe they themselves just have something within them that's lacking. And so the two of you may meet. And actually what can come from this mate is even more like pain, even more hurt. I'm actually gonna share a quick little experience from my own life here, okay? So I actually dated someone who had or has their Chiron in the seventh house whenever I was about 17. Now this, was a very short period of time and it really didn't lead to anything of great importance or anything like that, which of course you'll see why. But he basically asked me to be his girlfriend and I agreed at the time. 
but literally a few days later he was indecisive about it and he didn't really know what he wanted and I just kind of let it go you know I didn't really care so much about it you know there was no emotional attachment or anything like that on my part but still what came from that was we were still friendly with one another and I guess at the time I was also quite insecure within myself because of my own upbringing and I just sort of went along with what he wanted and his kind of back and forth mentality and I just you know I just kind of came at the other side of that uh, realizing that it, it you know it wasn't really going anywhere and I guess we just drifted apart. Another thing I think to mention here is that you may find it difficult to relate with other people especially if there's something about you that you feel is missing or if you have a lot of insecurities about yourself you may kind of be at war with other people unconsciously. Um, so a way that this could potentially play out is say for example a lot of people are discussing their likes and their interests you know as you do but you might be that person who then sees the complete opposite and then disagrees just for the sake of disagreeing with everybody else's interests and likes and that could be coming from a place of just thinking or unknowingly thinking that you are competing with other people that you need to disagree with other people, that you need to be on the defense mode against other people. So that is a possibility here, but I think that the reason for maybe why you do that is because you don't want people getting close. It's a defense mechanism, right? It's putting your walls up so that other people don't get to know you. Another situation or scenario could play out where you are with some people and they're discussing their likes and their interests but you just don't, you physically don't know how to relate. You physically just feel like you are not seen, that nobody really cares about your opinion anyway and so you just sort of keep it to yourself. This might even be a situation where you give this false sense of politeness or you give this false sense that you actually are really interested in what other people have to say and you're interested in their likes and interests um, but inwardly you don't want to be there, you kind of want to walk away. You know there's a possibility here with people pleasing or just going along with what everybody else wants or even a certain partner wants and not being direct with the partner about something you want to do. So there can be passive aggressiveness in that way. So yeah, this this position could result in you pleasing others unknowingly or just going along with the subject in, in hand even though internally you're like, I do not want to talk about this. Like I've talked about this with you so many times and I just cannot be bothered anymore. Then again, it might be a situation where people have said really hurtful things towards you or maybe you've been in a actual relationship, a partnership with someone and it was quite dangerous and potentially this person was violent okay there is a potentiality here of domestic abuse domestic violence within a relationship or partnership or this could be a situation where you meet somebody and they dig into those wounds that you have they mirror back to you those wounds so maybe they've come from a similar situation to you or they felt a similar way to you in association with the pain and hurt that you felt so the minute though that they reflect those painful things, those hurtful things to you, you might just want to run away. You might not want to deal with the hurt, with the pain that they are unknowingly throwing back at you. However, you might also project your hurt and your pain and your wounds onto the partner unknowingly as well. Another thing to mention I think when it comes to Chiron in the seventh house is in relation with contracts and agreements. So what I mean by this is that well whenever you were younger, whenever you were growing up, maybe your parents signed a certain contract 
that you strongly disagreed with, that you strongly were really hurt by. Um, by them signing that contract, by them agreeing to that thing, you felt so alone, you felt so rejected, you just felt like they didn't care, you know? They were glad enough to sign you up for something, to agree to something that you just felt so powerless from, okay? You, you felt like you just had no control, you had no say in the situation. And the last thing that I want to mention for Chiron in the seventh house here is in relation to clients and customers. So clients and customers can fall under the umbrella of the seventh house. So maybe in the past you have had certain clients or customers say really horrible negative things about you. Maybe they've provided really super negative feedback about your services or about you as a person. Um, maybe you've felt personally attacked by certain clients or customers that you've experienced in your life. Right, so now we have discussed the wound itself, let's look at some practical tips and advice on how to heal. So kind of going back to the scenario that I talked about earlier, where someone is discussing their likes and their interests, but then you could either strongly disagree or, or can create conflict or an opposition with them, but then also you could be you could be that type of person who just sits there and listens, but at the same time you're like, I do not want to be here. This is really annoying me. Uh, right. So with that kind of scenario, I think it's important for you to learn how to take the lead. You know, how to initiate a conversation that you want, how to bring up likes and interests that you're into. So rather than feeling stuck or feeling powerless or trying to overpower that person even in that situation. Just trying to get to a point where, okay, I understand. This is what they like. This is what I like and this is what I think. But it doesn't have to be this this battle, right? It doesn't have to be this this conflict over who says what. or And it also doesn't have to be where you try so hard to relate with someone that you pull away from who you really are. So learning how to be authentic, I think, just within communication, just letting it flow and being open to new ideas, bringing forth your own suggestions, just taking the lead, trying to initiate certain subjects that you really wanna talk about and just seeing, seeing how that, that goes for you. And this also then can be said in relation to the actual relationships that you form with other people. So learning how to take the lead within your relationships. And also before you get into a committed relationship, to try and think it through before you jump in. Because if you, jump in with an unawareness as to what you want, you may experience certain implications and disagreements and conflicts with other people. And also it's good not to necessarily lead people on because of your own indecision. So it's good to just think it through a little bit, you know, give yourself time and be patient with yourself as well. Cause of course, I completely understand too that if you experienced a tragic breakup or a divorce when you were younger or a tragic rejecting relationship that made you feel less than, if you experience these things, of course, it can be really hard to appreciate like your worth or appreciate you yourself as an individual. Um, and thinking or knowing that you have something good to bring into a relationship, you know? Because this could be where you always think that there's something to fix about you. You need to fix, fix, fix. But if you have that mentality towards yourself, that can be really complicating or um, difficult in actual relationships with somebody else. You may find it hard to really believe in love or see the beauty that can be found in a partnership. You may just see it as quite doom and gloom or you may see it as something that always needs to be fixed and always needs to be worked on, but you may focus so much on the fixing of it without 
seeing the blending and the appreciation of love. Bringing yourself into a relationship without thinking that there's something wrong with you or thinking that you are not deserving of that relationship. So the challenge here is trying to work on yourself but also being open to love or being open to another person. Um, and I'm not saying that if you do not feel complete within yourself that you shouldn't be in a relationship. What I'm saying is that it's good to reflect on you as well rather than being completely in on the relationship. It's good to sort of have some time to yourself but also it's good to be aware of your own wants, your own needs, your own pleasures, desires and everything else and then also being able to communicate that with that person you're with. So yeah, it's kind of like a back and forth between yourself and your own healing but then also how, how the healing of you can then help benefit and um, impact the relationship itself. But at the same time here, I will say this, that if you have a partner in your life and you're constantly trying to please them, you're constantly trying to attend to their needs, whilst yes, Chiron is about helping other people and by helping other people you can help yourself, you know, you still have to be aware of your limits, right? You still have to be aware of how much you can really give. You still have to be aware of your needs too. So in that situation, it would be really beneficial to communicate with that person. Do you know what? Like, I just cannot give you what you want. I can't give you what you expect from me. Rather than being a people pleaser or rather than pushing yourself so much to be that person or be there for them where it completely drains you. Rather than doing that, it's good just to truly communicate what you think, how you feel, what your opinion is. And I know that this can be difficult, especially if you have attracted a certain partner into your life who is deeply wounded and you maybe feel like you should be there for them but if you yourself are also going through something and that is hurting you then you also have to acknowledge that. I just think that with this placement there can come a tendency of being quite dependable on other people or there can be a tendency of you putting your own needs to the side or just things that you're really going through for somebody else. And this actually leads on to another way for healing is really by just being freaking honest with yourself, you know, being accepting towards the things you've been through. Because you may be in this place of self-denial. See, the seventh house is seen as the shadow. It's seen as these unconscious parts of us that we don't even know are there. So it's this like far removed part of us. And I know that me saying this still may be difficult for you to accept. And because I understand that the unconscious, it's unconscious for a reason. And so how are you supposed to fix something or look at something or address something that you don't even see or acknowledge? So yeah, I know that it's it's quite complex, but um, in terms of just being honest with yourself is, you know, for example, if, if, if a really good friend comes to you, a dear friend comes to you and they say to you, hey, you know what, I noticed that you're in this really toxic relationship and it's really bad for you, it's hurting you so much, I can see what it's doing to you, it's destroying you. And you may hear what they have to say but perhaps you don't see it you don't realize it and being honest with yourself would be to actually listen to what they're saying reflect on what they're saying try to make logical sense of what they're saying try to be rational about it ask questions towards that person try to see and analyze 
the value of the friendship or relationship you have with that person truly truly and just take time really take time to reflect on that information that you're hearing rather than shutting them out being in self-denial refusing to hear it i just think you know of course that's just one example but i just think it's so important to really learn how to keep yourself impartial with this placement to try to look at whatever situation you're in from a third party perspective to sort of put all the emotions to the side you know and try to see it for what it is another way to heal would be actually by entering into potentially a line of work that is associated with relationships and advice so for example this could be you entering into a line of work where you're a marriage counsellor or you help people who are having relationship difficulties you know so you could go and study a certain field or you could study a subject that really looks at human connection and looks at relationships in general and just how that all plays out psychologically but then you could go and of course use use uh, what you've learned to then help other people with these things now of course you don't necessarily have to go and work within these areas but you could also volunteer right or you could even for example if you were to have children of your own one day you could just really guide them and teach them the importance of them making their own decisions and being okay with their likes and their interests and just giving them the space and room to grow into their own independent selves um, and teaching them, teaching them about relationships and how to communicate what they want in a relationship and not to necessarily depend on other people within a relationship but to complement uh, the person that they're in a relationship with okay then cosmic warriors so that concludes my video on chiron in the seventh house so what we did is we looked at the wound itself followed by some practical tips and advice on how to heal thank you so much for watching thank you for subscribing and of course if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed then go right ahead and click that subscribe button and i will be back with another video very very soon bye